Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Now, as you know, I've been a bit sceptical of this AI thing that's come around. You never quite know where it gets its information from. I'm somebody who loves to read books and look at the spine and go, oh yeah, that's written by so-and-so. I know him or I've read their works before and I trust them or I don't trust them or whatever. And with AI, I've been somewhat hesitant. Today, we're going to go and explore a little bit more about AI and from our point of view, those that are trying to stay in the world of freedom, find out that actually it might be the answer to many things that we were not really thinking about. So today, my guest, I'm very thrilled to have Robert Odeck from the Observation Deck. And he has been dealing with AI and has seen its immense potential. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on, Richard. Uh, I much appreciate you taking the time to uh, have a chat with me. Well, I'm very excited to have this chat because I know that um, there's been some videos about with you on talking about the AI and this amazing benefit that not just benefits the larger big corporations or indeed the nefarious people out there, but actually you and I and the rest of the audience who can use it very quickly, swiftly and intelligently to push back against perhaps some of those things which uh, are nefariously working against us. Absolutely. Um, I can understand the hesitance uh, of the AI emergence, as it were. But people need to understand, though, Richard, that AI has been around for decades. It's just it's not been in the public domain for, for very long. And personally, I recognize the potential of artificial intelligence in the world of remedy very early on. So, um I wholeheartedly encompassed the idea of AI. Uh, and, and when I'd looked at everything that was available and the tools and everything else, there is, I wouldn't say it used to be a possibility. Now it's a fact that we as a people can use AI to our advantage. And if we don't use it, it's a little bit like turning up to a gunfight with a knife. Right. Because... At this moment in time, technology has gone so far and it's moving so fast. If we don't keep up with that race, then what are we to do sitting there typing our replies to whoever it may be that's making a challenge or a claim against us while they're just sitting there hitting one return button and going bang? You know, they're taking up our energy, the, the, the stress levels, the anxiety. And my goal was to remove all of the negative connotations to dealing with any types of challenges, which and, I'm pleased to say it's going pretty well. And just so the audience know, we've had a, a, a little chat, as you do when you set up these interviews, and you were just demonstrating in a, a very amazing speed um, how quickly you can use the AI that you've developed um, to push back against debt. Now, you, you've written Diffusing the Debt Bomb, and you have a, a second version which um, has the optional of AI assistance. Correct. Yeah. Which, which it seems to me, just from our conversation, this is a complete game changer. Absolutely. Um, and it really is. And you're not the first person to use that phrase either. I mean, when somebody, anybody creates something prior to any public, launch or anything there's always doubts in your own mind as the creator to say mm. is is this a good thing is will people embrace this for for what it is or you know appreciate the amount of work and effort that's gone into it and i'm pleased to say that in this instance i've hit the nail on the head because um when i when i originally about four years ago now wrote diffusing the debt bomb obviously everybody in the remedy world is fully conversant with templates which we don't really like using um but even when debt agents i mean let's just focus on the fact that we, we're dealing with debt agents and before i go any further i just want to absolutely clarify for youtube and everybody else we are not giving i am not giving legal advice to anybody um i am not a professional legal uh, lawyer or anything like that and if you're in any doubt as to anything that's being said here please seek the advice of a professional OK, this is a tool, a mentor or a coach. It is not advice. Um, so now we've got that little that little bit out of the way. And thank uh, you for doing that. Yeah. Um, 
It is my baby project and it's been worked on for months and months. But anyway, so cutting to the chase. So diffusing the debt bomb in its traditional way. Yes, it had the templates, it had the laws and it had the things you could ask debt agents to do. And it had, the, um, you know, it had the three notice, the pre-action protocols, you know, um, opportunity to cure and, and all this kind of stuff, you know. Um, and people would obviously cut, copy, paste and, 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 and what have you, but not really understanding what it was that they were cut, copying and pasting. They just knew it worked yes. on a number of occasions. But what was missing was comprehension of, of what was going on. Secondly, I had so many questions and not just me, but I'm sure other people in the remedy world. So many questions on how do you do this? What if they say that? How do I write this back? I, I'm not sure of the laws. That's going to take me ages to research this, that, and the other. Every single one of those negative or challenging aspects have now been put to sleep with the advent of AI. Because this particular AI, which comes as an option on diffusing the debt bomb too, um, will answer any questions. It will act as the best expert in debt mentoring in the united kingdom it knows all of the laws because i've personally trained every single one of them and every single piece of legislation is in the training base in its entirety you know from from the consumer credit laws 1974 the laws of property act 1925 the miscellaneous acts 1989 etc 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 dpa gdpr absolutely Everything that is required that a debt agent could touch on in a legal sense and their obligations are in the training database. So it's been trained on everything. So um, and on top of that, it's got six pages of cite court citations, which is common law. So in other words, it's not a court of equity where you end up with judge's discretion, which means he can go either way. It's mm. common law, in which case the judge has to follow this law. He doesn't the precedence, have precedence. Yeah. So the law of precedence is common law. So yeah. all of that's in the database. The the book itself is in the database, and the book comes as a standalone product. That if you're not familiar, you're a little bit nervous about AI. You do you you don't need to worry about that because as a free bonus, you get. It's called prompt engineering in the AI world, but basically in, in, in layman's terms, it's how to speak to the AI to get the most out of it. So you get that as well as the, the, the book. The AI is optional because the book is good enough on its own if you want to carry on cut, copy and pasting. Everything's in there that you need. However, the AI will be able to expand it. But just to, just to clarify to your, your viewers, Richard, the AI is built within the platform of OpenAI, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. Like they create the GPTs and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, so things like ChatGTP and exactly, which you can ask, ask it all sorts of weird and wonderful questions. Correct. So I have no vested interest. I don't have an affiliate program with these people or anything, but that's where I created this debt AI. So you will need your open your open ai account over and above the purchase of the book which is a standalone product uh but that link is in the book anyway and then directly underneath that link is a direct link once you've opened your account in open ai to the debt mentor ai you can now use and if you want to download the open ai app not the let me just clarify you, you download open ai onto your mobile phone and then yep. I'm holding it up, but we've got, let me get rid of the background uh, just for a bit. So you can see my untidy man cave. I do apologize uh, uh, because it's it's far easy. Otherwise it will keep disappearing. Right. Okay. Oh my God. I need to tidy up. I know. Um, but uh, let me just show you. Um, so it brings up. So once you've got your open AI account, yep. then the second link in the book, it's on the last page of the last chapter twice so you, you and it's it's quite clearly marked open ai account first hit that link when you've got it then you can download it as an app on your phone or you can use it on pc and laptop but you will end up with 
I have it on my phone, and I'm not sure you can see that. O Odex Debt Mentor, okay? Yeah. So, as I was explaining uh, before we came on online, Richard, and I could, uh, it was nice to see the look on your face, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know, when, you, when you've got that thing going and you, you just, well, you'll probably demonstrate the same so, thing. You... So, yeah, so what I'm going to do now, as you can see there, I'm going to tap the little microphone icon as if I've never spoken to a debt agent in my life and just ask it a really basic question like, um, let, let, let's see how it goes. I've just got a letter from a debt agent and I want to know what my rights are. Can you help me, please? There we go. That's pretty straightforward. So once you've done that, it will record it to the bottom of the screen there. You tap that little white button. It puts it up as text. Then, then the AI... It takes a second because it's now accessing the vast database that I've actually given it. So I'm showing you now it's going to actually, um, she says, now it's kicking out the reply. Let me just hold that up. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Right. I mean, obviously, I've already shown Richard this once, but now it's kicking out the reply on everything that the every obligation that the debt agent has in order for them to collect any money from you now. As you can see, it's very comprehensive. It's coming up with lots of different points. Uh, you, you don't need to worry about at this stage because if there's any point during this output that you're not sure of, then you just type underneath. Can you just further explain what X, Y, Z means in layman's terms? And it will do it for you. So you've got that comprehension. Now, once it's finished doing what it's doing and it's still going from that simple question, I mean, that, I mean, it just goes to show what obligations the debt collectors have, you, you know, just by, you know, it's got all this text. It's not just, well, where they just turn up and take your goods. No, exactly. It's uh, the, and this, as I say, this has been trained on every single law. So once you've got all of that information, just to top it off, if you're not sure about what that content is in, in anything that you've read, you just literally ask it. Um, point three that you made deed of assignment. Could you explain what that is to me, please, in yes. layman's terms? Yes, of course. And then it will explain. And it'll do another another output that you can then And go, then oh, wow. you can teach yourself. Now, and yes. the other wonderful thing is, um, now, given it's still going, by the way. Um, <laughs> but um, that is amazing. The, the, the other thing you can do then is for everybody that is not quite sure. Well, OK, how, how do I write back yes. to them? So now I'm going to tap the microphone again, as you can see, and I'm going to tap the screen and say, given the information that you've just given me, can you write me a draft letter? Um, hang on a minute. I've messed it up there, but bear with me for a second. It was, I hit the screen too, too quickly, right? Um, so given that information, can you write me a draft letter back to a debt agent requesting the... Um, the details that you've mentioned. Thank you. All right. So now that's gone up there and it's, it's now, he says, there we go. And now there's the start of your letter. Oh yeah. Look at that. And obviously you will also note that it's also been instructed to just put in the fields. So, the user doesn't even have to put their private information in there. And I suggest right. you don't anyway. Don't. You, there's no need to say what your name is or anything like that. And now this is literally typing your reply to the debt agent. Proof of assignment is terrible, but you can see. Yeah, yeah. Full statement of accounts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the, the and, and um, I'm going to stop it there because it'll just carry on. Um, but, and so you print that out, put your name in, and and fill out the fields, etc. Oh so, yeah. Can... So when it gets to when it's finished doing what it's doing, you literally there's a little button at the bottom just says copy, put it into your document. You fill the fields out with your personal data, so nothing goes into the AI. Yeah. Account number, name, address, blah blah blah. Sign the bottom, post it away. You're done. That I mean that it is absolutely stunning to see that. Now there's a few questions here. Uh, that, immedi that immediately come to mind. First one is no doubt some crafty solicitor somewhere will be operating in the same process and charging for an hour, which only takes them Funny two or three seconds. Funny you should say that, Richard, because I have access to the database in the background, obviously. 
in both. I mean, this is the AI we're talking about. And I also, mm. and I learned everything I needed to know when I worked with developers from Oxford University, which uh, paid an enormous amount of money to, but it created the, um, the major platform that I use with AI called Law Explore. Um, but that's not what today's about. I'm not going to start promoting that stuff. If you want to find Law Explore, there'll be a link in the description below and you can have a look for yourself. But the point being is that um, I looked in the back end of Law Explore because that's got nothing to do with OpenAI. That's my baby. Um, right. And the top three contributors on a monthly subscription basis are law firms. <laughs> Would you believe it? They are well, law firms and law student faculty. But you know what this is going to do. I mean, you like so many, like when um, the threshing machines first came in, it made a lot of labourers unemployed. And we had um, Captain Swing coming in and cursing and people. Yeah. Uh, this is changing the profession yet again or professions yet again because it puts the power back to the people. Exactly. And this is, I think, a far more powerful argument for the use of AI than against it, you know, because that that Luddite approach to the printed presses, as it were. Yes. Um, yes. We have got to move with the times. Otherwise, we will not survive the times. You know? So my other my other um, observation that came from um, the immediate thought was not only with their sneaky um solicitors working at it what about the debt collection agents themselves using the ai to push back or rebut what they have just seen come in going oh hello well this is someone using an yeah, ai program there's, a, there's an irony there because i mean but ai for aside for a second they had the audacity in years gone past to write back to you as if it was a defense Mm. say we don't bother dealing with templates and it's like yeah you know it's about the content not not the template yeah it's irrelevant how but it's the irony out. was that their standard letters are templates back to uh, you exactly you know, it's like the hypocrisy of it all you know but the beauty about this though is that depending on your circumstance that ai will never produce the same document twice there are no more templates. It will be right. worded differently in every single instance. But can can the um, debt collectors use the AI to affect? It's like playing chess against itself to outsmart it because effectively you've got two AI players now. And could they use the their version of going well? That from our point of view, we have the rights. Can you tell us why we've yeah. got the rights to come in and take your possessions? Right. And so, uh, yeah, to answer that is um, they don't stand a cat in hell's chance of doing that. Fantastic. For the that's, simple. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah, I, I know why you're asking. So I'm, I'm going to set your mind at ease. Yeah. Um, the, the response that you send them. <laughs> The response that the AI or you, the, the response that you send them, yes. okay, complies with the law and their obligations within the law. So no so amount of AI made. reply back to you is going to change the laws right. they're obligated to and their liabilities. Yes. So so they you, can you... obfuscate as much as they like. But I mean, one of the things you'll notice, I did actually put a little bit of my personality into the AI. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Some people would call it bolshy. Others, I mean, I never sign my debt agent letters. You're sincerely regards. I just put your move. <laughs> nice. And, and that's all I do because I'm pretty yeah. damn confident. Yes. I, 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 I'm 99.9% .9 confident that what I write to a debt agent, if I was to actually use the keyboard now, which yes. I don't anymore, but in my old days, I used to rail at them. Right. You know, who the hell do you think you are? Blah, 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 blah. And I've used such phrases as um, bottom feeders, street gangs in suits, which is the title of another one of my books. And I have shown no respect to them whatsoever and put at the bottom, if you want to stand within my crosshairs in a court, your move. That's it. And they just run for the hills. 
because there's enough knowledge in there for them yes. to go, we are not getting anywhere with this guy. So you have checkmated them in one move. In one move, yeah. In so one move. if you want to, I mean, yeah, you go through the three-letter process, but the last mm. one, because people often say to me, because of the experience I've had directly with debt agents, so, you know, just emphasise that there are people in the remedy world that live vicariously through other people and drop them into hot water because they think it might work, but it doesn't, and et cetera, et cetera. And I'd hate to think how many people have come on the wrong side of, say, fighting council tax claims and all this kind of stuff. Um, there are ways and means to do things without putting yourself at risk. Yes. Um, especially, and someone once asked me, Rob, you know, have you, you dealt with council tax? Yes, I have a book on council tax. But you know the difference between mine and most other people's suggestions is that it doesn't put your house at risk of a charging order. Because right. that's what's going to happen if you get this stuff wrong, you know. Um, but, I mean, it's not about council tax. The point being is that everything, just to put your viewers' minds at ease, everything that's in that AI and in my book is the law, not my opinion, not all. I think this might work. I have beaten debt agents personally out of quite a lot of money, on different occasions for a lot of people um you can see by the ratings on the app actually that it's way up there so people are using it um i i, I have a whole group dedicated to people saying yeah look account closed or they don't want to do this and then and not one of them have been taken to court by a debt agent because of the content of those legally obligatory letters or notices yes. if you will you know. So if people, if people, you've mentioned there that some people are following certain processes that people have put up, whether they've understood it correctly and they've done, there's some nuance that they've got wrong. And, and now here they are going, oh, my goodness, I wish I'd never started this process, whatever it is. If they've got themselves into that hot water, can they use this app to effectively get themselves out of it? Yeah, this, um, I mean, I know I shouldn't say this because I'm going to be shooting Law Explorer in the foot a little bit, but... Um, the AI that's been created for the debt agents has a much larger database from the original LLM. And LLM is a large language model that the original OpenAI was trained on. So generalization. Um, so if you build a model that specializes like this one, you, you set the parameters to say you will only work within these parameters using this information. Right. It's great. What I've done with this one is I've left the back door open deliberately. So if you do have any inquiries about hot water that you've got yourself into and not necessarily to do with a debt agent, then you can still ask the same question, to, to, you know, the type of questions. And it will give you a reply that's pretty damn accurate. And it will always be within the law. Yes. Within the legal framework, that whether you like it or whether you believe the law is just or not, it's the process system we have to work within. So the skill and the art of law, as I like to call it, rather than Sung Zun's art of war, but the art of law is using. I mean, if you think about it, Richard, that that phrase, anything you say may be used in evidence against you. It applies to the other side as well when they put stuff in writing. Yes. And, and and I used to say to people, for instance, um, I want to see the deed of assignment. They write back and they're very slippery and they go because that gives them title to even contact you. That's the major piece of documentary. Right. And so in other words, the bank has assigned the debt over to them. Well, there are very strict laws on what that assignment must contain and how it must be transferred. And not one of them are followed by debt agents, not a one. So they don't have two signatures. They don't have an independent witness signatures. In fact, there's no document whatsoever because it's a database transfer, which means they don't have the right to collect that money from you because they don't have the title in most cases. Can't say all. No. Because, you know, we can't speak in absolutes. Um, and this isn't legal advice. I'm just just saying this is yes. the situation. So 
the the AI knows this already and a few uh, obviously other provisions as well. But that's the key. Now, the thing is, if you don't have title, the deed of assignment to something, you have no right to it. Yes, but it means that anybody could come and collect and just pretend. Right. So here's the slippery bit where most people fall. If you write and words, obviously, as you know, mean everything. Yes. So if you write to them and say, I want to see the deed of assignment, they'll write back and say the deed of assignment is commercially sensitive or I'm paraphrasing. It's commercially sensitive and we don't have to show it to you. Now, and then you think, oh, OK, what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and obviously then you can the AI will cite three case laws to say, well, that's bullshit. Um, here's <laughs> the case laws where you, you're clearly lying through your teeth. Oh, and yes. by the way, one of those case laws is you. Okay? <laughs> you know, um, which it is. Um, but but more to the point is, how did you ask the question? I want to see the deed of assignment. They wrote back and said that to you. Now, if you change the question, you force them into fraud because they just because they've made a statement about the deed of assignment, they still haven't admitted that they have or have not got it. Right. They've just but avoided. They've heard they've yes. got it. So instead of saying, I want to see the deed of assignment, you can change the, the, the thing and say, do you have the deed of assignment? Yes. Because if they write back and it. say they do and then try and take you to court later, which they won't. But if they can't produce the deed of assignment, then that's a fraudulent claim in order to gain money. And that's fraud. Section two, 2006. That carries a ten thousand pound fine. Yes. Which if they're only after 500 quid or whatever it is, they're not going to risk it. No, but now you have got them on the back foot and say, here's my counterclaim. Yes. They clearly stated they had the deed of assignment. Where is it? Yeah. Because that was the question I asked. Not, can I see it? Do you have it in your possession? And, and that's the nuances that it, is that a lot of people may have a smattering of knowledge. They say a little bit of knowledge is a bad thing, is a you know dangerous thing, because you may think, ah, oh, yeah, we need to see the deed of assignment. And they ask the question somewhat wrongly, Yes. But it sounds like they've asked it right, and as, you just, as you've just explained, um, if you haven't got the nuance correct, then they'll slip around. Whereas, of course, if you say, "Can you know?" Do you? Show yeah. It to me. Are you currently in possession of the deed of assignment? Yes, exactly. And and, and then, they, the deed of assignment is that's not what I asked. I asked no. if you were in possession of it. And if you ask that, presumably they're either going to lie or they're going to go, "Oh golly, they know." Well, this is not going the anywhere. beauty about fraud, 2006, section two and three, pretty clear, right? The way the reason you ask that question, I always put and if you, you can read the notice in, in, in my book, but I put underneath which fraud option are you going to choose? <laughs> are you going to choose fraud by omission? Section right. three. Yeah. Or are you going to choose section two by outright lying? Yes, I love it. I love it. And, and uh, you literally, you've put them in such a, a rock and a hard place. Yes. Which, they just have which to one are you going to choose? Because either way round you go, unless you're fully transparent and admit you don't have it, I've, yes. got, I've automatically got a case against you. Yes. Because you're and, trying to get financial gain from, from a lie, from misrepresentation. Yeah. So it's either going to be misrepresentation or fraud by omission because you're not going to tell me, are you? Yeah. You and know. then most likely they'll just shut the case. They'll disappear. And then they run for the hills and go, your case has been closed. And there's yeah. there's also what I've covered also in the one notice. Uh, and there's only one notice in, in this. It's an absolute nuclear weapon because it's got the case citations. It's got. And over the years since the original debt bomb came out, I've had all the correspondence. I mean, I'm not getting it, but I've got a cabinet full of it over there. Right. I mean, it, I don't measure it in pages now. I measure it in feet and inches, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have heard every single excuse and every slippery argument that they've ever come back from. And this notice blocks every avenue of escape because of my experience from these people. Um, and it's like I've even mentioned in it, I call it the debt merry-go-round. Like you send the three notices, they back off. And then a third, another party pops up and go, yeah. oh, we've been given your your account uh, by Cabot, whoever it is, 
as it turns out that it's actually all the same company, but we, we are now going to do that, right? So the best thing to deal with those, and it is going to sound really bad for our people, because as long as you open up to see what it is, don't just throw it in the bin, keep it on file. But the second one, the debt merry-go-round, okay, you ignore them completely, right? Because if the first one didn't couldn't produce the deed of assignment, this one's got no chance. So they're not no. going anywhere. They're just trying to have a, a grab at the cherry, right? So you ignore them, right? You don't need to correspond with this third party because they don't have title. And, and if that, they just want you to buy it. So just forget them. Um, yeah. But in the first notice, I've actually said, and if you think you're going to play the debt merry-go-round, knowing that you don't have title to this document, that you're knowingly and willingly passing it on to a third party, knowing they don't have entitlement, is, is misrepresentation. Okay? And if you attempt to do that, you see, any more than two people that's involved in a debt is now harassment. Oh, I see. Right. So if they double team, okay, that's harassment. And the law for harassment is in there. In fact, I've got another book called The Compensation Companion about harassment. So if you collect people your TV licensing letters, just follow that book and you can get about five grand off a of TV licensing, let alone not buy a TV license. <laughs> wow. Because it's harassment. And, and, yes. the, and, and it's quite clear the law is it's not just about the law of harassment. It's been interpreted by the high court now. So the citation is in there. So it's common law. I, I right. don't work on none of my none of my productions, none of none of my publications work on presumptions or assumptions. They work strictly on the law. And I can tell most of your viewers now, 99.9% .9 of your viewers, relax. You don't owe debt agents a damn penny. And this is going to Take all of that stress away and just have a lovely summer and just hit the return button when you're ready to. And then just fill in your details at the top, post it away and carry on with your life. Stop paying the debt agents until they show true claim and title. I have to add that caveat at the end there because... Yes, of course. Because I'm not just going to say across the board, stop paying people because no, no. they might have although in my four and a half five years of dealing with debt agents i've never seen a deed of assignment from a single debt agent whatsoever because the process that they use doesn't give them the deed of assignment because they're sold in bulk as a is this is is this in your opinion then as this starts to proliferate and people start using this see the end of Debt agencies. I, I I honestly believe it would. In 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 one of my books, if, um, Street Gangs. I asked the first chapter. I I did ask my MP for a judicial review on the practices of debt agents in the United Kingdom, but because it's part of the financial institution, you, you're kind of weighing against the wind, as it were. Right. So, um. So it's not going to happen, but it is. It, it's totally underhanded. It's it's um, I mean, my opinion, it's a financial scam of the biggest degree. Um, they know they don't have title. And what they do is because people have said to me, oh, Rob, yeah, but how come I got a county court judgment then for a debt? Well, because you didn't answer any replies. You didn't fight it. You didn't challenge it. And those CCJs for debts usually accumulate because they use the same clearinghouse as the council tax liability orders and all the rest of it in Northampton, right? These debt agents, they're not debt agents per se. They are bulk investors with portfolios. And these portfolios are sold um, as, as, as tranches by the thousands, right? In which case then, do you honestly believe that any of these debt agents have actually sat down with the bank manager and a signor there, a signee there, independent witness, every single one of them? Never happens. It's mm. a machine to print money from unsuspecting members of the public who believe. And there's too there's too many people. I mean, I mean, it, it, uh, there's no way they could backdate any of this stuff. I mean, not backdate it physically, backdate it, but I mean the way that the society is at the moment with so many people getting into debt with the tight squeeze that everybody is feeling, yeah. there's no way that they could go, oh, hang on, this AI is putting an end to this money train. We'll have to go back to the old system of... Because there'd be too many. 
There's far it's too just... many. They just couldn't. Do... And that's why they've brought this system in, because they do it in bulk. And yes. one, of, one of the reasons I know this for a fact, I didn't read it in a book. I actually phoned up one of the portfolio sellers as an investor, gave him a load of crap over the phone yes, and said, look, I'm listening to it. You know, I'm looking to invest a quarter of a million pounds in a debt portfolio. What sort of a, what sort of deal can you get? And he just, he just spilt the beans on the lot. Right. So, you know, so I know how yes. it works. And that's actually explained in the very first chapter of the book to say, this is why you will not ever see a deed of assignment. Right. OK, but, because yeah. I, because I know for a fact the whole process cannot produce a deed of assignment. And then what they do is they bulk process for those uh, who are not low hanging fruit. They bulk process through Northampton County Court. And also <laughs> one of the things that I almost forgot to mention. Oh, Rob, I got a letter from a solicitors representing them. I'm really worried. Yeah, don't worry. There's a letter from the A.I., to the solicitor to say, back the hell off, because you're now in breach of SR reg SRA regulations, which is the S Solicitor's Regulation Authority, all right? You haven't done your due diligence. You might be turning around and saying, oh, I'm acting on behalf of their client. Have you actually checked to see if your client's got entitlement for you to even act on them? <laughs> because if you haven't, you're now in breach of your own regulatory body rules, which yes. the AI has already written. So, I mean, not only then, this is clearly this is going to be a game changer in, in the debt area, um, just more broadly, then um, this technology is now in the people's hands to push back against a whole load of stuff which we couldn't possibly do. You know, we, there's no way that anyone can understand all of legislation and hold it in the head, even though we're kind of expected to not break but rules. That's, that's the beauty, Richard. You're absolutely right. No one can understand the whole of legislation and put it in their head. Not even those people that have been fighting us. But yes. now we can. Because and, and... we can put it into an AI. And I can tell you now that the AI has already passed the bar exam in the top 10 percentile. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. No human trained person yes. could possibly have all of Halesbury's law in his head. In his head. My, what? my AI has got it. Right. Now, the, what, the one of the worries I've had with AI is the bias that can be put into it or the ability for nefarious people to say, OK, let's give them some form of they think they've got a power, only these are the bits that we won't actually allow them. Yeah. Is that a problem? Right. Or am so, I just worried about nothing? No, because there's there's two parts to an artificial intelligence. OK, the first part is the knowledge base itself. In other words, that which it's accessing. Okay? Yes. So the original AIs obviously were trained on large language models, LLMs. And that to me is the system at work. Because if the because you can go back a couple of steps and go, right. So these large language models. So where did you get your information? Google. Well, OK, so it's tainted already. Right. Because obviously Google is Google. Right. Yes. Um, but so there's two parts. You've got the training data, which I've already explained in terms of all of the laws pertaining to the debt. Then you've got a critical part, which is what we call the system prompt. It, that is the parameters by which that specific iteration of the AI will work to buy from in and all the rest of it. So there are very specific instructions within the system prompts to say, you will not go outside of this knowledge base. You will not do this. You will not do that. You will only right. do X, Y, Z. You are a debt mentor coach assistant. You will only use your this knowledge base, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it literally ring fences them into saying, no, that's my parameters. So if you were if you went to a, a club that was baking cakes, you wouldn't be going to that club expecting to look at lawnmowers. Exactly. Exactly. So if it if it, if you were to put something crazy into the AI, it would actually come back and say, I'm sorry, I just deal with debt. Yeah. 
and and it wouldn't never give you any other explanation. It's like, oh right, okay. Um, if you try to break into the back end of the AI, I've already covered that as well. So don't even try, guys, because it's rock solid. Um, you know, because there are people that have got the skill to get in there and change things. But I have this AI has been tested to destruction, and because of the the I'm I'm not just a guy from a remedy world who has an interest in AI. I spent two years being trained by developers on AI, and I know there's people out there going, "Oh, Rob, but what you're talking about is just creating a GPT." No, I, I'm not. But if you feel that that's all you need to do, then knock your socks off. Mm. Um, but th it, th there's more to it than that. If you want to make the top of the league AI, and I can assure you and your viewers, what I've shown you here is division one. Um, it's not some guy who sat there for the day and went, dick, 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 dick. Oh, look, yeah. see that does that. It, 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 could... it reminds me of back in the day when I was doing basic um, on computers, when computers first came out and you could go, oh, look, I can move an icon. How clever am I? Now I have, I've forgotten all I ever knew about BASIC and, and all of those sort of early it, 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 Yeah, it's a new... That, that's why there's a prompt engineering book because originally I was selling that as a standalone product. But then when I brought this out and I thought, you know, I need to really help as much as I can. So the next question is going to be, Rob, this book's absolutely great, but I can't get what I want from the AI. Well, then... Here's this one, which is part and parcel of the same. You, you buy that, you get two books. Work right. through the prompt engineering, how to talk to an AI, and then ask your questions. But, you know, if you're going it, to, it, as you probably know, it, it, garbage in, garbage out. Mm. Right. So if you're going to just type something like, um, I've got a letter from a data agent, what do I do? I mean, for God's sake, give it a little bit of information you yes. know, about the situation. Um I mean, although I must admit on that demo, I didn't give it anything and it still, still worked. It still but, came out, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then it's been de designed that way. But um, the more context that you can give, the more accurate the output is going to be. You know, so yes, it can knock out a, a letter back to a debt agent in, in generalist terms. But if you want to add a bit more context saying, on this date, I received this, on that date, I received that, and so on and so forth, so forth, could you send a reply, including the information I've just given you, in order to, bang, it's going to personalise it for you. Yes. Without you putting your personal data in. Now, because we're talking about AI and, and um, things like that, it, it this clearly shows that there is a useful, I mean, we've, demonstrated debt very very well people are obviously frightened about a whole number of things smart meters for example comes to mind yeah. that that one could use not obviously the debt gtp but one could use ai and perhaps somebody else somewhere is able to produce something that does similar things to push back against all these terrors absolutely everything have. yeah i mean yeah the, the, there is no the only limitation as has been proven here, the only limitation that we have is our own imagination. Right. Um, yeah. And that's it. I mean, I'm working on other projects, which I can't mention here. Um, but I mean, um, I'm happy to mention it after we start recording that. Is, but, the, but there are other products, uh, pro projects that are um, way above the debt side of things against the crown itself with using databases mm. of, of, of all of this training information to say, whoa, wait a minute, you know, um, and there is no limits to, to, to what you can create if you give it a little bit of forethought. And so then, no longer do we have to, to be ignorant because we have tools that can we can learn from very quickly because in many cases you wouldn't necessarily know how to push back against whatever it might be and you wouldn't even know where to start on google or down the library or even asking a friend exactly but the these new tools are there to enhance our lives and push back against some of the tyranny that is is coming yeah. our way I, I i can't remember the last time i used google um i i, I will always use gpt first and then right. it, and then interrogate it and and well, at the beginning, I said that, you know, I like to read books and you can see 
the author so that you can gauge if you have believe that particular author or you have knowledge of of whatever or research papers and things like that my worry with G- chat gtp for example as as one of them is that you get something spewed out but you don't know where its sources are and you can't check i mean i suppose you can check them but if you've got the author that says you know man-made global warming is a myth you could go okay i'd like to check that thank you very much or cite it or find out is is that still possible that you can ask it can you give me the research paper so i can yeah Yeah. there's you you can go into like say for instance google scholar um where actual research papers are or, or or whatever database you want to access you can actually give it all of the research papers on any given subject you like and go, I only want you to work on those. So let's let's get to work on whatever that might be. Right. And and um, yes, you can within the prompt itself, within your input, turn around and say, if you're going to give me any information, I want you to cite the sources and give me the links as well so I can check for myself. Brilliant. Um, okay. And and so so you you can cover all of the bases, which is why it's so important, I think. It's not so much a new language. It's easier than legalese, put it that way. Because oh, a relief. Yeah, exactly. Um, because to, to, to input as you will want it from an AI, it's kind of like, I mean, I quite like it as a bit of an intellectual challenge because there's two types of, 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 of thought when it comes to inputting information into an AI. One is called tree of, uh, sorry, one is called chain of thought where you know where you want to end up, mm. but you're not going to just jump from A to Z you're going to coax the AI to go there in stages until you finally get to where you want to go. Okay, so that's chain of thought, right? So you're already working seven moves ahead. The AI isn't, right? And then you've got tree of thought, which is much closer to the synaptic junctions of a human mind. So you can actually say, for instance, um, so you've got a project, Richard, that you want to do... um, it doesn't matter what the project is. Say, for instance, we want to build a bridge in an estuary area. Mm. Okay. Um, now, the principles apply to whatever the subject matter is. So I want to build a bridge in, a, in an estuary area. Okay, well, I know I've got floodwaters. I, I know that I've got soft ground um, and I've got infrastructure. So if I, if I was the project manager, what experts would I need in order to affect a, a, a successful project? So you list these experts. So then your input would say, okay, you, AI, are a committee, not singular. You are a hydrologist, geologist, engineer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I want the opinions of all of you from this point onwards as a committee in what I'm now going to input. And then at the end of this, we are going to choose the most optimum option to go forward. So now you've got 10 minds working instead of one. They're all going to talk to each other and you're going to come up with the optimum output. So you've got chain of thought, singular, tree of thought, committee, if that's the easiest way. And that sort of thing, would you use that in um, in the account that you mentioned earlier, the open GTP or open yeah, AI? Yeah, you can use, you, you can, I mean, not in the debt AI, you wouldn't have to do that. No, no, no. But in the, in the first account that you have to open in order to get oh, yeah, to the yeah. debt. I mean, you can, so that, is that yeah, a if you've got your open AI account, then you can play yeah. around with those prompts without using the, the one I've created and have mm. so much fun with it. Um, I mean, I've, I've had debates with the AI that's been programmed about the nature of life and how far they own, you know, the universe and all of these questions and it's very satisfying well it is for me to have the ai admit that it was wrong when it started <laughs> through logic and rationale of, yes you know um, so it can, so it does change its mind oh yes were, and you can you... change its mind because right. the, the, the thing is and and i think this is the difference that we were talking about nuances earlier in the way you ask questions but mm. people need to understand that if you input information into the AI, say you've got a, a letter from a debt agent, all right, it's not just reading the letter. It is comprehending the content through what we call vector memory. So yes. it, it's understanding what it's reading, not just you, reading. 
you just reminded me that when we were not recording and we had a little chat beforehand, you said you can scan the letters that you get from the yeah. So if you if you so, so it can answer yes yeah. So if you I mean if you want to scan them then you scan them to PDF. All right, then you've got a little um, uh, paperclip icon where where you would input. You click yeah. that. And because it says, you know, what do you want to upload? Upload that document. OK, upload that document. And the very first thing is I just want you to read the confirm the content of that document. Don't give it any clues just to make sure it goes. Oh, yeah, that document. And it will summarize it in a paragraph. Right. Now I know that you've got that document. I now want you to give me a reply to that document. And make sure you mention their obligations and my rights. Yeah. And that, that's it. And they, boom, there's your reply. Cut, copy, paste, fill in your details. You're done. So, yeah, it's, it, there is nothing you have to do apart from give base instructions now. And because of the way that the document's been written and and say, for instance, you're going to put some other personal detail, not personal details, but circumstances in. Mm. Th as I said earlier, that's why there's no more templates. Yes. So, I mean, when you, and when you say personal circumstance, it might be that you've got a blue badge for your car, for example. Exactly. That that might be something that, that it ought to know about. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, you might be vulnerable. Yes. You know, class as a vulnerable person or, or whatever. Well, then it will include all of this information. So it's not a template. And the other end, I guarantee if you do that, if you take the effort to do that, they won't even realise they're reading a template. <laughs> No, because as you said, every letter is different. Every so letter they could is get, different. They and, could and get a hundred letters. Yeah, and, and just and the giggles. You, I mean, honestly, you, you could even instruct it to say, and I want you to, I mean, I've actually written back to debt agents um, in, in the style of George Orwell. <laughs> so you, you, can, know, t you can write or, in any, like or, Charles or, Dickens. One of my favourite, yeah, Charles Dickens, Old English. Yes. Um, Verily I say unto thee. You know, um, yes. how, you know, how I, wonderful. My favourite one's Terry Pratchett. Oh. Uh, I, you know, um, and so you can say, I want you to reply. And it's all still um, legally accurate. Yes. But I want you to do it in the style of Terry Pratchett. Thank you. Yes. You know? And it will. Or well, the Hitchhiker's Guide to oh, the yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, you know, some, I don't understand what you said before. I don't have my Babel fish in. Yes. You know. Um, and and the because someone said to me, Yeah, but is it would it pay to be so flippant to debt agents? Well, all jokes to one side, what are you conveying psychologically back to the debt agent if you are that, flippant? Yes, that you're in control, exactly, and you don't care, and I don't care, and you have no power, and you have no power, exactly, yeah, you know, so so. This is why I, I know for, for those people who are worried about the debts and how do I handle it, stop worrying about it. And, and, and I do say this on my groups, please start having fun with it mm. because you can turn it psychologically from something that stresses you, anxiety and all the rest of it, and worried about the next letter that's coming through the door to yes. something that you can have a giggle with because you've got, a, a thousand, you've got something with a 10,000 IQ on your side. Yeah. And they don't. No. I mean, to be honest with mine, I was getting to the point where I was thinking, because they keep saying we're going to come along and take your possessions or take your goods and things like that. And I just thought, well, there must be stuff in here that I don't need that I would just send them, send them some stuff. I said, well, I understand you might, might take that down to the auction. And here's an old well, place, a bit scratched. You know, you know here you go. here's one. I'm not sure you're familiar with it, right? And I actually put this as a PS on, on, on the on the notice in the book so you could have a giggle i don't suggest you all do this but i did but it's there anyway um there was two things i put in there i put i ended on a quote and said and may i just end this notice on the fight on the quote from the famous shakespearean actor clint eastwood from the movie magnum 44 do you feel lucky well do you punk <laughs> right and then yeah. Because of the bills of exchange at 1888, because someone said, this is a bit of a joke, isn't it, Rob? You're not taking these people seriously. I said, no, I'm not. I said, and they know I'm not. But I put, P.S., would you like a picture of a rainbow unicorn in full and final settlement? I have enclosed one for you. Yes. Right? It's a rainbow. And they're like, what the hell? 
we've just demanded three grand. He's sending us images of rainbow unicorns as full and final settlement. Yeah, but the thing is, if you don't send me back that in 22 hours under the bills of exchange, you've accepted it as settlement. So enjoy the rainbow unicorn. But, well, that's very interesting. That reminds me there's a book um, of a guy who sent a spider. You may have seen that. No, I haven't. Oh, he sends, um, he's got a debt. He sends back a picture of a spider to settle the account. And uh, they say, we cut, you know, say, here's a drawing. I think it's worth 800 quid, blah, 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 you know. And he sends them back this just this very childish line drawing. And uh, he sends it to them. And uh, they say, no, we can't possibly accept this. So, that, so he says, well, can you send it to me back then, please? And then they say they, they, re they send it. This is all on email. They send it back. And he says, oh, that's interesting. You've only sent me a copy of it back. I want the original. Yeah. And of course, then they're going, well, uh, you only sent us a copy. Oh, my mistake. Then he says, oh, actually, the one that I sent you only had seven legs instead of eight legs. Here's a version with eight legs. And this goes on backwards. And they go, no, no, honestly, we can't accept this as a payment. He said, well, can I have that one? <laughs> and it's just ridiculous. And because, I, I, and I know it sounds crazy, but he's at the stage where you people cannot bother me. And yes. I am just wasting your time and your stamp and your postages because we know, we both know, you don't have, and I and, and I, I see the irony of a spider because it's got eight legs, but I would have actually put, because we know you don't have a leg to stand on. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Um, and once you, you know that within your heart. Yeah, that fear goes. That, that fear completely disappears, you know, and you can then start having fun with them. And to stop them in their tracks at the final bit, you know, you've got your opportunity to cure... Um, and all the rest of it. Um, to stop in the fight, Rob, what do I do? They keep sending me stuff after I've sent them the three letters. What happens now? Well, you've got two choices. You can either take them to court, but never take them to court for the money. Because if you have a look very carefully at their correspondence, they never say that you owe them the money. They always say we're working on behalf of X, Y, Z as an yes. agent or this, that and the other. Well, the easiest way now that, that could that could be fraud by misrepresentation, because all you have to do is get in writing from the bank and you don't ask the bank any other questions apart from just one question. What is the state of this account? It'll either oh, be right. open or closed. If the yes. account is closed, they just said they were acting on behalf of the bank is an outright lie. Absolutely. That's fraud. So you can then send them a copy of that. And again, they will run for the hills. Now, you do have the choice to chase them up if you want to do a counterclaim. No, I know most people just want a quiet life, so mm. that's fine. My attitude when I first started the, the remedy world is, okay, so I've won. Look, they've closed the account. I'm thinking, no, I'm just halfway there. The fact that they've closed the account shows guilt. Now I'm coming after them. I haven't that's finished right. with them yet. Yes. Right? I'm going to get a claw back on every penny that you've ever had and compensation and costs for the time and hassle that you've given me knowing you had no title to this claim from day one. Well, exactly. I mean, if you had to write several letters and try and, you know, and you had to be in when they said, we're turning up at six o'clock and, you know, any time in that day, and exactly. you've sat and said, well, hold on a minute, my time's worth £200 a day or whatever whatever rate you have, yeah. or £1,000 a day, or, you know, whatever. So I'm having that back, thanks very much, because you've caused me all that hassle. You haven't got the deed of the title, deed, exactly. the deed of assignment, etc. And I, um, I know there's people who think, no, I just want to quite, I just want them to go away. That's fine. And I fully yeah. understand that. But people like me with a little bit of extra time on hand, I mean, I'm nearly semi-retired anyway. So, you know, it's like, and I get bored intellectually. I'm thinking, no, actually, I'm just going to have a little bit of a dig at them, you know. I mean, I did one off to the waterboard this morning, you know, um, and I know they know, and I know exactly what I'm doing with, with the water company. And I've got them stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment. And I'm, I mean, I'm not going to go into that, but no. th that's because I've got the time. Yes. To check. And, you, and that's, it. and this is, I mean, you, you put it down there. A lot of people don't have the time, but okay. this is where the, the GTP, the AI, the debt AI system that you've worked on can just give people that they don't have to worry. They can have sleep. They don't have to have sleepless nights. They can have a beautiful sleep nights. Exactly. Send out this, do this. And, it, you know, clearly it's only a matter of, you know, half an hour to sort of dictate this thing, print it out, put a stamp on, go down, done. There you go. I mean, I, I remember, Richard, that I used to take days in, in crafting a reply 
and yes. then wasn't quite sure whether what I'd put in was correct or, or whatever, or maybe even weeks and months researching. And even if I was researching, not understanding what the hell it is I was reading. Yeah. Know? But you can take a whole law now, cut, copy, paste, and say, explain that in layman's terms for me, please, which you, you don't have to now because it's in the database anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the point being is that th there is no more research required. You don't yes. have to know because it, I can guarantee hand on heart what mm. you need is in that AI. And secondly, um, you don't have to ever craft anything again. You can just say, I want you to do X. Thank you. And you can literally do all of that in the time it takes to make a cup of tea. It's amazing. It's amazing. I've run. We normally keep these to an hour. We sort of run out of time. Um, this is an absolute amazing um, thing. So many people, I imagine, who have who are watching this and have been looking at the remedies and things, will be going, "Oh my God, we've got to get one." So, in the uh, description, of course, I will have the links. Sometimes YouTube messes up the links for whatever reason, and I always ask people just to verbally say it so they can do a verbal where would where's the best place to go looking robert so uh, if you go to my website which is gaiauni.com so g a i a u n i dot com gaiauni and i've got actually just so that we can <clears throat> flash it up on the screen there you go gaiauni just go to books on the main heading menu and that will pop up in front of you and um away you go and there we are. I've even got a USA version of what we've been talking about. Amazing. And that's the sort of thing that you want to be looking like. Yay! Yeah, exactly. Or... Exactly. So, but... um, and um, at the end of the day, we are moving into a new era. And I think the worry that people had about either AI or debt agents now, debt agents are going to have to really evaluate how they do business now because they're mm. not going to con it's going to hit their portfolios which yes. i'm so glad about you know? well when you see these images of people being evicted from their houses yeah. and um, being treated and the police you know aiding and abetting and all of that and it can all be stopped with one or two or three letters that you've created on well AI. not only that and i'm glad you brought that richard but because i will be working on a bailiff app OK, including the police pace laws. Right. So if a bailiff or any of the others turn up, including the police and you've got this phone on you, well, a phone on you. Right. And the, and they make or say anything or make any claims. You can just go bang, 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 bang. Read the law and stop bullshitting me. Yeah. OK. Go so away. In other words, go away. It's, yes. It's as simple as that. You know, whether that's liability orders, uh, you know, oh, it's been signed by a judge in magistrates. Well, that's strange because there are no judges in magistrates. They're magistrates. They're called magistrates for a reason. You know, um, if, if it didn't come from county or crown, the chances are a judge had nothing to do with it. You know, um, although you do have a circuit, but very rarely on magistrate circuit anyway. But the, the point being is, though, yes, we can furnish ourselves now with all of the ammunition we need without taking on board someone else's vicarious ideas mm. sticking to the law and making them stick to the law as well you know and we know that you know, i'm just here to keep the peace well then why are you speaking yes <laughs> yes yes it, it, it's being noisy and it's the thing and i think you mentioned this a, a few weeks ago on your channel you're talking somewhere about what the meaning of the words are and and you'll notice that even um on some of these warrants of entry, which they're not really anyway, but it says like, w w we can grab your goods. Well, I'm sorry, you can't because I don't have any goods because goods are stuff that's for sale in a commercial sense. And this is private property. Yes. So there are no goods on this property because I don't run a business from here. And, and think... but you see, you notice that they use the term goods to draw you into the commercial world and not out of the private world so remember next time folks if they ever say we've come here to remove some of your goods don't have any goods nothing yeah. is for sale here i'm selling this thimble you can have that there we yeah, are go there, away there's my goods it's a it's a thimble i found while i was metal detecting yes. old one you know but yeah i think that in all seriousness though i mean it, it's about the nuances but the new tool now i believe is a game changer 
Um, and I, I've and had the, that the, I mean, the, 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 thing, the thing here is that, I mean, you have removed the fear. A lot of people have fear, and fear is something that we're being pushed on left, right and centre from mainstream media, from the government and from these enforcement officers and, and all of that. And and in one fell swoop, your work there has has just made people have this sigh of relief and and we can thrive again we we needed something or someone on our side and now we've got something more powerful than the opposition has got you know robert it's it's been an absolute joy to talk to you thank you so Likewise. much um i'm sure a lot of people are watching this with a big beaming smile now and clambering for the internet to download and access it and i don't blame them um and well, I hope we, they enjoy every moment of it as well, because it's, you know. Um, and where that, can we find out your, your show, The Observation Deck? Right. So The Observation Deck YouTube channel, um, you, you can find just it. Just put it up, in. Up, up, yeah. yeah, just put it in. It's a blue logo. You can't miss it. Um, and uh, yeah, just pop over and have a look at some of my other videos on Remedy. Uh, although I do cover uh, a lot about my channel started on my love of history and archaeology, you know. Um, oh, so, brilliant. So um, I've got lots of stuff in there. And if COVID hadn't have hit when it did, I would have actually had a Netflix series on alternative history. Oh, wow. You know, um, you know, but then when YouTube found out that I wasn't towing the party political line, as it were, then we, I got shadow banned on the historical stuff, you know, but hey ho, especially when you tell people Pompeii is a lie and here's the proof. <laughs> well we don't want to get shadow banned on this so no, we're um, not going to do that anymore but yeah uh, so the observation to... deck it's got an eclectic mix but obviously you you mature over time um but uh yeah it's um it's it's it, hopefully it's both entertaining and educational which is what i aim it to be and this particular tool that we've been discussing today i think will help you ease your pain in dealing with claims, unlawful claims against you. And I just want to reiterate, nothing that Richard and I have said is legal advice. It's just two guys having a chat. And if you are in doubt of any legal requirements, please seek the advice of a professional because that's not me. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A big thanks to uh, Robert there for that. It's uh, made me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, and I'm sure it has you. I will be back with um, more monologues and, of course, wonderful guests. It'd be hard to top that one. But there you go. Uh, from Robert and I, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. A big thanks to Robert thanks for much. coming on. Until next time, goodbye. Appreciate you having me, Richard. Bye-bye.